I see that there could be an even greater panic into gold and silver this time around than last time. The world is in a lot more trouble today than it was in 1979. Well, gold and silver are doing a little bit of a pullback today, and that is to be expected. I mean, gold has gone up for six or seven days in a row now, and so it's time for it to take a rest. And it came a breath away from $2,000 yesterday. So uh, it's put in some spectacular performance. And as you'll see later in the video, Goldman Sachs has, uh, has changed their target on gold. Their target for this year was $2,000 an ounce. And since it came a breath away from it yesterday, they've changed it. But there's some other big news in that story. So silver, you know, it makes sense for gold to come down and retest the $1,900 level. Uh, it hasn't quite dropped. It, it went to 1908. Uh, so it could do another pullback tomorrow. I have no idea. But right now, it's on the high of the day as we speak. So it's at 1956. Um, now, uh, like I said, this is normal. Uh, here is silver. And uh, it's near its high of the day, not quite on it. Uh, but it went down to 22 bucks. And there are some previous peaks at like 21 and so on that have, been, that have taken place during this consolidation. So it's not testing its all-time high. But it makes uh, sense for it to come down and find a support level. Now, uh, some people want to rush into it all at once and you know they, they gold and silver get into the news and they want to just rush into it um you know i developed a plan many years ago and i have been following my plan and my plan was slow and steady accumulation uh and working the gold silver ratio to determine which metal i would buy i would buy the most undervalued of the two metals and so developing your plan is a very important thing. We're going to get into that a little bit more later. But gold and silver are in the third stage of their bull market, like I said. That happened yesterday with that breakout above 1900. And what's different, I talked about investor sentiment. This is monetary demand. And it is monetary demand that is required. People have to be moving back toward gold and silver as money, as an alternative to the fiat currencies, as uh, the, the safe haven. And like I said, the, uh, the big rally from the uh, beginning of the century to 2011 was a greed-driven rally. Yesterday and the day before, this is beginning to become a fear-driven rally. So it's, it's a rally where people are seeking that safe haven. And fear is by far the more powerful emotion between fear and greed. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit more about developing a plan, but let's take a look at that long view. So here's uh, gold from uh, 2001 to 2011, and just such a perfect bull market. And then this secular bear, cyclical bear market within the secular bull market. And now it has broken out, so it, it, it makes sense to retest that. But uh, if you applied the gains that you had from 2001 to 2011 to the bottom uh, here at $1,100, bucks, you are coming up toward the $8,000 level. Now, people will say that that's totally insane, that, uh, you know, a lot of people, especially if they're conservative. But when... Uh, gold was first, when we ended the Bretton Woods system and gold was uh, free trading back on August 15th of 71, economists all expected gold to drop because there was going to be no more demand, demand from government, no more central bank demand. And so they all expected it to fall. And anybody that said that gold was going to $100 was considered absolutely crazy. It had always been $20 up until 1934. And then from 34 to 71, it was 35 bucks. Anybody that thought it was going to uh, 100 was just absolutely nuts. And it went to 873 was the actual top, according to uh, stock charts here. Um, so 
Retesting that $1,900 area is sort of important. Now, I'm going to uh, show you a couple of other things, though. The gold-silver ratio, and this is just for this century. Uh, so what you can see here is that the average is somewhere around 60 or so, 65. Uh, and we're still, this is at 78. That was yesterday. Today we're back up at 80. And, um, and uh, if we really take a look at this, the long view of this, here's 50 years of the gold-silver ratio. And what you see back here in 1980 when gold and silver peaked, it dropped down to 14. And I believe it could even go lower than that, 10, which means, um, and it may not. I mean, I don't guarantee anything. It's just that I see that there could be an even greater panic into gold and silver this time around than last time. The world is in a lot more trouble today than it was in 1979. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I'm wondering how the Federal Reserve and the government are going to try to stop gold because if gold gets into a melt-up and it's really charging ahead, that can actually create the end of a fiat currency. That is what was actually happening in uh, late 79, early 1980. It was in a melt-up and it took some real rule changes on the part of uh, the uh, Treasury, the Federal Reserve, I mean Paul Volcker, Really, uh, he changed interest rates. He put us into a painful recession to try and uh, get a hold of this. He was involved in some of the changes uh, that the Commodities Exchange made to the rules to try and break the Hunt brothers. Uh, I believe that they used the Hunt brothers as an example. Uh, they, they busted the Hunt brothers who were... Uh, there's this story that the Hunt brothers were trying to corner the market. They were protecting themselves from uh, crazy currency printing. We had only been off of gold for uh, just eight years, or actually about uh, four or five years when the Hunt brothers really started uh, buying gold and silver. And uh, the gold and so a lot of people that trade silver also trade gold. And when you look at the commodities exchanges back then, it was pits of guys uh, standing in circles, yelling and screaming at each other and doing hand signals. And the gold pit is right next to the silver pit. And so they changed the rules uh, several times on the Hunt brothers, trying to uh, stop them and squeeze them out. And uh, uh, in, on, I believe, January 18th, 1980, they changed the rules to liquidation orders only, meaning you couldn't open a new futures contract you could only close out the old ones. And that is a rule by the Commodities Exchange that says until the price, uh, um, that in, until this rule is lifted, the price must fall. That's the rule. And so they stopped silver at 50 bucks. Why would they do that? Because gold was in a runaway, and gold can threaten the survival of fiat currencies when it's in a runaway like that. And so I'm wondering what the Federal Reserve will do. I mean, it, this has to be keeping them up at night uh, right now, this and all of the other problems they've got on top of it. But uh, they've got to keep interest rates low because of the government debt and all of the currency printing, and they want to encourage bank lending and stuff. But if they keep interest rates this low, then the safe haven of bonds it doesn't pay, and people turn toward things like gold and silver. And if gold goes into a runaway, that can cause the death of the dollar. It's a real quandary for them. Uh, so I'm sure they're shaking in their boots right now. Uh, anyway, so uh, one of the things that I want to say is uh, go to my website and get my book. Uh, just click on this little link right here. And one of the reasons I want to get you, I want you to get the book, and it's free if you do it this way, uh, this is part of the book. This is chapter 15, Who Are You and What's Your Plan? And in here, uh, you need a plan. This is, you know, I had a plan of accumulating constantly and slowly over a period of time and uh, using the gold-silver ratio to determine which metal was the most undervalued and then buying that metal. And in here, you want to develop a goal. Uh, you want to develop a strategy to implement that goal, and then there's a tactic used to implement the strategy. Uh, you know, you want the, the strategy is to reach that goal, and 
then the uh, tactic is w the way you're going to do that. And then you need to develop a plan and you need to ask yourself some certain questions. So go ahead and just download this book, get it right now. And in here, I've even given you a little work area so you can put in your risk tolerance, your, how, how involved you want to be. Are you going to be a day trader or are you going to be uh, an investor? And just like I'm um, an investor that I, I swing trade. I've been accumulating for years and years and years. And then my big swing trade will be when I think gold and silver are peaking, I'm going to start uh, selling in little tranches. Uh, my insiders at goldsilver.com know more about that. Uh, I, I tell them a little bit more about what I'm doing. Uh, your reason for investing. Do you need income or are you looking for future wealth? Your age and your portfolio size. Those are all very important things. Um, and a good team is part of a good plan. And your team doesn't have to be like a team of people that you get together with physically. It could be YouTubers like me. If you're watching this video, maybe I'm on your team. Uh, you're getting information from me. Uh, you can sign up for newsletters, uh, but getting some uh, other viewpoints is very important. Like I say, I don't give advice. I just try to report facts and give as much information as possible and encourage everybody to learn as much as they can about this because the world is changing so fast and you you know we can only play the hand that we are dealt and right now the world economy is in a perilous position and um, uh, so to protect yourself and have the possibility of making great gains as well is great but you know what I don't want to get rich this way. I don't. The world that I see in the next few years is not the world of my preference. I would much there's there's some things that are changing right now that uh, that sort of uh, put dampers on some of the plans that I had. But you know what? I know that I'm going to do very well uh, compared to the average person that isn't paying attention to these things. So back to GoldSilver.com. Um, the gold-silver ratio is at 80, and the reason I point that it, this out is because um, uh, I, I showed you the uh, gold-silver ratio just now uh, in that long view. And let's go back to that for just a second. So this is uh, since uh, 1970, and you can see that it came all the way down to 14, meaning silver's value was 1 14th of what gold's value is. It took 14 ounces of silver to buy an ounce of gold. Today, it uh, takes about 80. If it goes to 10, that means gold will, silver will have eight times the performance of gold. If it goes to 20, it'll have four times the performance of gold. Uh, even if it just goes to 40, which I, I am absolutely confident, you, I, I'm not guaranteeing anything for you. You guys all have to make your own decisions. Uh, and figure out your own plan. But this is an area that I know it's going to. So you can get double the performance of gold, sell your silver, and buy twice as much gold as you paid for. And so uh, that's some of what is behind my plan. I've explained it a lot further to my insiders. But getting back to goldsilver.com, going down to the stories here. Uh, uh, Trouble is coming, uh, Warren's short selling legend who just cashed in a hundred million dollar winning bet. Um, uh, gold and Bitcoin are going to rise. Jim Grant says gold has a fairly bright future after its recent rally. And in that article, he says that uh, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury have challenged the notion of scarcity. I love that. Challenge the notion of scarcity with all of their printing. You know, back in 2001, one of the things that set me off on the course of writing my book and making my book the way it was uh, and developing my entire plan, there was a, a paper that Ben Bernanke wrote uh, titled Deflation, Making Sure It Doesn't Happen Here. And he sort of laid out what the Federal Reserve was going to do. And I based my entire, I mean, I based the next 20 years of my life off of that paper. And in there, he said the dollar, like gold, has value only 
to the amount that is strictly limited in quantity. <laughs> and <laughs> they have just challenged that notion. The notion of scarcity is gone. And then later, um, you know, it says the United States will not recover. Uh, rising taxes or printing currency isn't going to get us out of this. Uh, but here, Goldman Sachs raises gold and silver forecast on real concerns about the dollar as a reserve currency, as the reserve currency. Now, uh, I have been giving lectures on this since 2009 or 10. Uh, the death of the global dollar standard is what I called it. And I used to report on the nails in the coffin. And you can't anymore because there's, there's a whole bunch of them every week. Uh, and this is one of them, Goldman Sachs. <laughs> I think, aren't they the world's largest uh, um, brokerage? Uh, this is investment bankers. Uh, this is huge that Goldman Sachs is actually worried about the U.S. dollar's decline as the world's reserve currency. Uh, and I've been warning about this since 2009 or 10. It's nice to see Goldman Sachs catch up with me. <laughs> Sorry, being a bit snobby there. Uh, but uh, nothing can stop gold. Deutsche Bank projects Fed's balance sheet to, will hit $20 trillion in the next few years. It's, it's currently at seven. We're going to spend another, like I said yesterday, another trillion dollars that we don't have. And it's going to be hard to raise that money in the bond, that currency in the bond markets uh, if, it, if they're trying to sell bonds with uh, no return on them when gold is, is putting in uh, uh, such spectacular gains. And so uh, the analyst at, at uh, Deutsche Bank just sees this is the Fed's balance sheet, and they see $20 trillion coming up in just a few years. And so uh, that is something to watch out for. And to me, it says that gold and silver have big room to run. Uh, all of my analysis that I've been doing for years uh, basically suggests that $5,000 an ounce gold is just an absolutely absurd low price. Uh, these prices are just like a gift from God. But um, you really should read Jeff Clark's recent article on the purchasing power of gold. So if we go back to goldsilver.com, uh, this the secret to understanding gold's true value. That's the important thing. It isn't how much, how many dollars it's going to be worth. It's how many shares of, of the S&P 500 or the Dow or how many, how, how many ounces of gold it takes to buy a single family median home. Things like that. How much stuff will you be able to buy with it? And then lastly, we have this article that came out a couple of days ago. Stay the hell away from gold. And um, I find things like this entertaining. Uh, the guy has his own viewpoint. Uh, I'm not going to get down on him or anything. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's warning people about the volatility of gold and that, you know, you don't want to get in gold right now because it could crash. But uh, let's take a look at gold's performance over this century. <laughs> I just sort of want to leave you with this chart. I'm going to revisit this chart in a future video here where I sort of cover the performance of gold and silver uh, during the 70s. And uh, we'll make this into a horse race. Uh, so down here, we have your roller coaster ride of the S&P 500 with uh, you know, losses here of uh, basically 50% loss from its peak. And this was um, uh, more than 57. This was like a 62% retracement uh, from its peak up here. Uh, but we're only from from the beginning of this century. We're only up 129 percent on the S and P, and we're up 584.5 percent with gold. So the moral of the story is: stay the hell away from gold. <laughs> I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.